Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some people going bankrupt in 10 seconds or less. That's how the cookie crumbles, honey. When I was ages like three to six, my mom would go on like night long binges of gambling. And because of that, obviously we couldn't afford a babysitter. So like up until midnight, she could put me into like Kids Quest, which is this arcade where they had caretakers like watch over your kids while you gamble. But after it closed at midnight, she didn't know what to do with me. So she built a fork in the back seat of our car in the parking lot of the casino. <laughs> so I would just be in there vibing for like four to five hours and then she would check on me. Um, but if I started getting antsy after about four hours and it wasn't, you know, through the night yet, she would say <laughs> I was probably sick and give me some Tylenol so that I couldn't pass sleep. out. <laughs> Stop. My mom had me leaning. Okay, I feel like maybe at the, like, if it's at this point, I think maybe we might have a gambling addiction. Like, I think that maybe there's a problem here. I don't think that we should be making forts for our children and, and giving them, and drugging them. <laughs> I mean, okay. Giving Tylenol to a kid is not necessarily drugging them. I say that lightly. Is it? I don't know. I should probably find that out. Like, can anybody inform me? Is that... <laughs> I think at this point you should probably stop gambling. This might indicate that things have gone too far and you're gonna lose all your money. My mom left me alone during her casino days. Lol, it was before we had cell phones. I used to call the casino desk and have them intercom her. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize that this was a common experience, you guys. Anyone else here got a deeper appreciation for their parents? My parents don't have any addictions except for cabbage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> My mom can't even have more than a glass of wine. She passes out. That is literally evil, but also so resourceful. And I have so many mixed emotions. Like, were you supervised, but neglected and drugged? <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on. There's some people in the comments that would be like, Shelly, that's child abuse. Don't die to get child abuse. Listen, it's not that serious. <laughs> I mean, it is serious, but she's laughing. Charlotte makes light of child abuse. Yes, she does. What about it? What about it? Part two of my mom's raging gambling addiction. When I was growing up, we owned a nail spa, but it never made enough money to support her gambling habits. So she would run like side businesses or hustles in the nail spa. She would sell knockoff Gucci, Louis, Versace, whatever purses out the back and knockoff perfumes. She had a client who was an immigration lawyer and she would do the client's nails for free so that she could schedule people who needed help with their immigration papers at the same time as her client and charge those people like a lawyer Whoa. fee. Also our nail spa was in a very like rich Caucasian area. So before work she would run around to all the local garage sales and yard sales and whatnot and she would bargain and buy in bulk these people's old jewelry and she would bring it home and clean it up and put it in like little display cases and resell it for like five times the Whoa. price. Whoa! Imagine she didn't have a gambling addiction. Think of how rich y'all would be. That's so unbelievably resourceful. Like, why is it that you couldn't be that innovative without a gambling addiction, you know? Think, think how successful you might be. Like, why does the addiction have to be a part of it? I'm so scared of gambling, dude. I've never gambled in my whole life. Oh, there's a third part. Oh, it just keeps going, eh? When I was eight, I sprained my ankle after flipping off of a trampoline. And when I went to the ER and they asked where my mom was, she refused to pick up her phone. And when she did, she told me to tell them that she was two hours away at the casino. One time my mom left the casino on Christmas Eve and left me and my cousins home alone. We did not see her until after New Year's. My what? place was literally always empty for three years of my life, except for casino oh, carryout food. Girl! Which I didn't mind because sometimes there was lobster and filet mignon. She would miss soccer games, cheer meets, and choir concerts, and tell me it was because she had to work. But when I logged into her Apple ID and checked her location, she was always at the casino. Sometimes Ugh. when our electricity and heat bill wasn't paid because she was always at the casino, we would go stay at free five-star hotels at the casino because she was always at the casino and had a lot of points. Buddy. In case y'all are unaware, the game is rigged against you. That's how casinos make money. It is rigged against you. The chances of you actually winning at the casino are so freaking slim. I'm sorry you went through that, babe. That sounds very traumatic. I hope that you're okay. Yeah, that, that, that got sad. That got sad. I'm sorry. That's, wow, I didn't realize the extent of how bad it was. I'm sorry for anybody that has to deal with this. This sounds awful. I hope the next clip is a little less serious. 23 years old, I filed for bankruptcy. I'm gonna tell you about it.
A lot of people hold a lot of shame and embarrassment around bankruptcy and talking about it, which shouldn't be the case. Finances are a big part of life and a lot of us aren't taught financial literacy. So here we go. 21 years old, I'm dating a person who heavily influences me and not in the right way. They really took advantage of me a lot and he was very entrepreneurial. Um, always signing up for groups and masterminds and things to get into that networking area. He signed up for this program that's supposed to stand by you side by side while you create your own business. He spent $50,000 on that program. These programs are bullshit, by the way. Yeah. I went to this weekend workshop for like $49 a ticket because Tony Robbins is going to be there and we are in love with him. And this whole workshop is just a bunch of, of these programs selling to you it's very high pressure very fast pace and so it's like okay there's this program for uh amazon marketing selling it's 500 dollars. you have a two-day weekend course you have to sign up within the next 30 minutes and they did that with all of these different things tax liens real estate they went from like 500 dollars to like two thousand dollars for a weekend course he is like oh my god we have to do the real estate one that there's so much money in real estate let's do it I will pay you back because his credit cards are maxed. So we bought three courses that weekend. Um, was pretty close to already maxing out my credit cards. We go to the real estate one for the weekend and the entire two days, they're just doing a sales pitch. No. And their program, there's like three tiers from $20,000 to like $50,000. During this weekend, they're telling you, who can you reach out to to ask for money? Do you have a rich uncle? Like tell them that what a great investment this is. Here's the script, call your banks to increase your credit line. Here's a script to get a credit line that is out of your income. So they like hold your hand to get you to get these credit limits Whoa. to give them money that you already know you cannot afford. And they know that you cannot afford it. So I got maybe like $40,000 worth of credit cards that weekend. And boyfriend is like, okay, let's wow. do this. Like, as soon as we get our first deal, I'll pay you back 50%. I'm feeling stressed and frustrated. And I kind of get snappy with him. And he's like, whoa, dude, chill. Like, you need to calm down. But I'm like, this is a lot of money. Like, what the heck? And But I do it. I do it. I spend... $30,000, $35,000 on these programs. But they're like, this is such a good investment. You're going to be a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. This is how much money I oh, have. Oh, give me a like, break. You're going to be like me. I'm going to teach you everything that I know. Okay, I got to go to part two. You can learn all of that uh -huh. on YouTube, by the way. I'm not gonna sit here and say I would know better in a situation like this. As someone who used to be a very desperate person who couldn't get a job, moved to a new city, was trying to find things to do, was like going everywhere on Craigslist, everything, all right? There's a lot of people out there that are there to take advantage of very vulnerable people. I've been a victim of it. I'm sure plenty of people watching have. Scammers are out there everywhere, okay? There's never an easy way to make a quick buck. You're gonna have to work really hard. Sorry to have to say, but you are. But I'm not judging. Let's hear what else she had to say. So I'm immediately $35,000 in debt and they're like, all right, you have these three upcoming weekend boot camps to attend to where we're gonna teach you this, this, and this. And then here's this login. You have all this information. After I get all this, I'm realizing I can find all this information That's what I'm online saying. for free. So the the value just wasn't there. And then they say like, okay, we're going to like personally coach you. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Every time we go to these weekend boot camps, I'm paying for the Airbnbs for us to stay at. And they're like, oh, like tax write-off. There you go. Like no problem. But he's using me to try and gain money through real estate because he already is $50,000 in debt. So like, what the f I'm 21 years old. He was like 25 at the time. Whoa. Like, no, no, you naughty boy. <laughs> but we pursue it. Like we're really trying to make this real estate thing happen. Like, just but just get your license. the real estate tactics that they are teaching you are scamming other people essentially. So like, it's a pyramid scheme. And taking people out of a home. And like, it's just like, oh, buy real estate, but with none of your own money. So for like six months, maybe that's not that long, but I'm trying to make this work. And then I'm realizing like, no, this is not, like quick money is not good that's money in this sense. Um, so months later we break up, I move back to Utah. This is all in California, by the way. And 
all of my money, all of my income every single month is just going to paying off these credit cards. No. And I'm drowning at this point. How do these I'm people find the audacity? Old, and I'm just like, what the f I'm never going to pay this off. One of my coworkers, she is getting resources for filing bankruptcy because of issues with her ex-husband and like him doing stuff and like buying stuff, but it going on her credit. So I get to use her as a resource. I end up going to the same lawyer, lawyer spend a thousand dollars and I file for bankruptcy. I did buy a nice pair of hiking boots before I did this though, because it's all gonna go away. <laughs> it was stressful, It so much anxiety the whole time. You know, I'm worried that I'm ruining my life for filing bankruptcy, but honestly, it's the best thing that I could have done in that moment. I was young enough, I didn't have any assets aside from my car. I got to keep my car because I need a way to get to my job. Um, we wrote off everything and the only way that it negatively affected me was credit. not being able to have credit yeah. cards for a while it took me two years until i could get credit cards again and when i got my first one it was to build my credit so i sent this bank 200 dollars, and that was my credit line and so if i couldn't pay it i already sent them 200 bucks well i'm really happy to hear because i think there's definitely a stigma around filing bankruptcy and i learned something today and i just uh i think this is like super educational for people who are struggling financially and maybe it's an option for you it got her out of a hole i hope you're not dating that guy anymore guys the only person that should be telling you how to spend your money is your accountant okay if you own a small business and even if you don't i'm telling you right now my accountant has saved me a ton of money he's taught me so much about money an accountant is the only person that should be telling you how you spend your money, how much money you have. Do not take anybody's word for it except your account. And even then, there are some shady accountants out there. Like, I've had a couple shady accountants, let me tell you. But if you're struggling financially, an accountant can help you with that. An accountant can help you uh, figure out how to expense things, how to put things on the business, how to, you know, kind of just like work things around. And by the way, an accountant is completely a tax write-off. So you're gonna pay taxes anyway. I didn't realize that this was gonna be like a like a finance video. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna go with it, I guess. <laughs> to those of you who are struggling financially, I hope this video helped you. Um, it's not the end of the world. There are ways around it. Financial advisors, if you can afford it. Accountants, if you can afford it. And a lot of this information is available online for free, okay? All of it. Don't be going to somebody who's gonna promise you the world. There's no such thing as getting rich quick. There isn't. Get that out of your head. Here's the story, everybody. Here's the story. So when I was in college, I used to work at a casino. I worked at uh, Diamond Joe Casino and I worked at Dubuque Greyhound Park Casino. So I had a high roller come in. He came in. In his first few minutes, I used to pay the jackpots out. So he had four machines lit up and had $100,000 in jackpots on four machines. So I told him, take a check, take a check, just take a check. And he's like, nope, want the cash, want the cash. I'm like, no man, take some of it in a check. He didn't listen to me. So by the end of my shift, he lost all of that, I paid him $100,000 in cash and by the end of my shift, he had blew it all back. He was playing Stop. 25 cents a spin going like this. He was having a breakdown. He lost 100 plus, he won 100,000 plus what he came into the casino with in my eight hour shift. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, take the check, you can come back. Come back another day. I've never set foot in a casino. I've never played any sort of casino games, really. I've thrown the dice. I've blown on a dice, a die, dice, and won somebody money, but I've never actually gambled before. But one thing that I have heard is that when you win, you leave. You don't keep playing. By happenstance, you happen stance to win. You win something, you leave.
take the check. How about never step foot in a casino? Uh, yeah. This is why I'm terrified of it, you know? Like, it's just a very scary thing. It's not talked about enough either. And you're getting the check, that at least prevents you from, oh, it's just maybe one more, just maybe one more. And then once you're in it, you, you can't get out. Bed Bath & Beyond just added a B to its name, bankrupt. And I'm the guy responsible. And this is the true story of how I made that happen. Whoa. So 33 years ago, I'm a college student looking for a summer job. They're about to open up a brand new store in my neighborhood. I go down there. I prove I have a pulse. They hire me. On my first day, this kid gives me a tour. He says, whatever you do, don't go into the warehouse. Why not? I said, why? He said, because they're running a crime ring out of the warehouse. Wait, what? Pillows are flying out the window. They're landing in the trunk of this guy's car. I go, say no more. Not going to the warehouse. They sign me a boss, this assistant manager. This short guy looks just like Elton John. Tiny. He's no bigger than a peppercorn. <laughs> this guy always sits on top of this tall bar stool, barking out orders at me. Why is this guy always bossing me around? Well, he's your boss. Yeah, I still don't like it. So Elton John Peppercorn says, okay, you're going to take all these uh, kitchenwares hanging on that empty wall over there. I'm like, kitchenware? What is a kitchen? What, where am I? What is this place? I don't even know. I spend the whole day hanging sponge wands on this wall, right? Monotonous. Meanwhile, they got the same music playing on a constant loop in the background. Every 25 minutes, it's Mariah Carey. I had a vision of love. Oh, God, I hate this job. Day one. Day two, I show up. Elton John Peppercorn says, all right, change my mind. Take all those sponge wands off that wall, put it on that wall instead. I go, no, 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 no. I'm not doing this again. No, I'll do something else. He says, no, I want you to move those sponge wands. I go, listen, dude. It doesn't matter where we put the sponge wands. None of this matters. None of this is important. He starts yelling at me, move the sponge wands. Fine. This goes on every day for the next three weeks. I show up to work. I basically undo whatever I did the day before. Whoa. Put it up, take it down. Put it up, take it down. Put it up, take it down. I had a vision of love. Oh, God, right? I had just about had enough of Elton John Peppercorn. So one day I go, I grab one of these step ladders and I set it down very gently in front of his stool where he's sitting, right? Very gently. He goes, what's this for? I go, oh, I thought you'd like it. Now you can finally get down. Oh, he doesn't like that. Next day I show up to work. Someone says, hey, the manager wants to talk to you. And I'm like, ooh, the manager? They're going to name me employee of the month. Not that I think I'm any good, but honestly, I'm one of only three people in the whole store not robbing the place blind. In my <laughs> mind, I'm employee of the month. So I'm on cloud nine. I'm going up the steps to the manager's office. I had a vision of love. Oh, Mar Mariah, please. <laughs> right? I sit down at the guy's desk. He says, you, you're fired. I go, no, 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 no. I think you mean to say I'm employee of the month. Get your stuff. Get out of here. But, but, but I, I had a vision of love. I get out of there, right? As I'm leaving, I turn around. I give it the malocchio, the evil eye. That's Gaelic for the malocchio, the evil eye. I put a curse on it. In 33 years, this place is going to be out of business. That's how I did it. So, wait, you put a curse on Bed Bath & Beyond 33 years ago, and now it's bankrupt because of you? I don't know about you guys, but I believe him. <laughs>